Hello, this is a complete guide on how to use the digital nose features of your BME688 sensor. We are going to cover how to record data, how to import the data into AI Studio and how to train the algorithm. If you want to teach your sensor how to distinguish smells, the first step is to record some meaningful data. There are two methods to accomplish this. The first is to use the BME688 breakout board by Pi3G and the second method is to use the BME688 shuttle board by Bosch. Both the BME688 breakout board and the shuttle board should run at least 24 hours to burn in. If you want to burn in the BME688 breakout board, you can use the forcemode.py example from the BME68X Python library. To burn in the shuttle board, simply plug it in and leave it running for 24 hours. Let's start with the first method. If you want to record data using the BME688 breakout board by Py3G, then you need to connect the board via I2C. The next step is to take the board and put it inside an airtight container together with the specimen that you want to record. To record data with the BME68X breakout board, we need to download and install the BME68X Python library by Py3G. There's a different tutorial that shows how to download and install the extension properly. Then, after you have installed the extension, navigate to the tools directory and execute the BME raw data.py file. The sensor will start to record the data. Each measurement will take approximately 10 seconds. And there is going to be some sleeping cycles in between the measurements. The amount of sleeping cycles and measurement cycles depends on the BME config that is used in the BME raw data.py script. You can configure your sensor in BME AI Studio, export the configuration and import it in the BME raw data script if you want a different configuration of sleeping and measurement cycles. You should let the script run for at least 4 hours. This is necessary to provide enough data for the algorithm. Keep in mind that it is always better to use as much data as possible because more data will result in a more stable algorithm in the end. It is advisable to note down when you start and stop recording a specimen, so that you don't get confused later on. Each specimen should be recorded for at least 4 hours and if you are done with recording, press Ctrl plus C to finish the session. The measurements will be saved as a .bme raw data file in the BME raw data directory of the BME68X Python library. If you want to use the BME688 shuttle board to record the data, the process will be a little bit simpler. The shuttle board is equipped with 8 sensors, hence it will record data 8 times as fast as the BME688 breakout board. The process is very similar. Put your specimen inside an airtight container, power up your BME688 shuttle board and put it into the container as well. The red LED indicates that the shuttle board is powered up and the yellow LED indicates that the shuttle board is currently taking a measurement. You can record multiple specimens in one session. Simply switch out the specimens and press one of the two buttons on top of the shuttle board. This will label a new specimen and help us later when we import the data in AI Studio. When using the shuttle board, you should record each specimen for at least half an hour. And don't forget to take notes, this will help us out a lot during the creation of the algorithm. Unplug the shuttle board to end the session. Your measurements will be saved on the SD card as a .bme raw data file. Transfer the data onto your machine that runs BME AI Studio. Next, 
we need to import the data into AI Studio. Open BME AI Studio and create a new project or if you already have an existing project, click Open Project Folder. Then click on the Import Data button and select your .bme raw data file. Provide your session with a meaningful name. It is always a good choice to name your session after the specimens that you recorded. That way you can see at first glance which specimens are contained in the session. You can edit the start date and the end date will be set automatically. Under specimen data you can see the data shown as line graphs. There are four channels, the gas data channel, humidity channel, pressure channel and temperature channel. And you can choose between each of the eight sensors if you recorded the data using the shuttleboard. Now we need to label our specimens and set their timings. Switch back to the gas data channel and look at the graph. In the first couple of minutes we see a drastic increase in gas resistance. And there is a little bump when we switched out our specimen. We don't want this to affect our measurements. That's why we crop the timing so that the bump and the drastic increase are excluded. If you recorded the data using the shuttleboard, there will be a specimen template for each time you pressed one of the buttons during recording. If you recorded the data using the breakout board, we need to add specimens manually. You can also delete specimens in case you have too many. If you are all set up, press import data to finish the process. Now switch to My Algorithms. Select an existing algorithm or create a new one and provide it with a meaningful name. In my case it's fruits versus vegetables. Then add classes to your algorithms. I added the classes fruits and vegetables. The next step is to add specimens to each class. Scroll down the list of specimens and tick each specimen that belongs to the class. Scroll down to see some stats about your algorithm. Each class should have the same amount of recording time to prevent the algorithm from being biased. Further down below you can choose an optimizer, maximum round of training and data splitting. If you are not an expert in machine learning, you should leave all the settings at the default values. If you want to learn more about each setting, press the question mark icon. If the setup is complete, press Train Neural Net to start the training process. The training duration will depend on the amount of data that you use. It will be indicated in the top right corner. You will see graphs for accuracy, validation accuracy, loss and validation loss. The accuracy graph and validation accuracy graph should increase over time where the loss and validation loss should decrease. You can also see the amount of epochs. For each epoch, the entire training data set is fed through the neural networks. Note that oftentimes the estimated duration is not needed to train the algorithm. Once the algorithm is finished, export it as a bsec2.0.6.1 file.